What's up, Badger Nation? I'm Nancy, the producer of this podcast. This week, we are sharing one of the most popular episodes of all time of the PPC Den. It's a super oldie. It's the 78th episode we ever recorded, and it's all about product targeting. There is a new episode on expanded product targeting that is linked below that is also awesome for you to watch after this. But this episode is a deep dive into five things that most Amazon sellers don't know about product targeting and strategies for how to work around it. Big thank you to Stephen Knock for joining Michael on it. I hope you enjoy it and we'll see you in the Badger Den. I've launched campaigns and picked keywords I've got my bit set placements too Now bad mistakes I've made a a really good episode for you today. These are things that you might not know about product targeting. We're going to be talking about product targeting in Amazon advertising in ways that you probably currently do not think of them. So we are going to up level your understanding of product targeting, what it means for you, how to get the most value out of product targeting. And without further ado, I want to first talk about what actually is product targeting, what you think product targeting is. You ready, Steven? You ready to drop in here? Let's do it. All righty, Steven. You know, I'm almost a boomer. And <laughs> one, I remember Amazon advertising almost 10 years ago. Uh, did you know there was a time before match types? Uh, I did not know that, actually. Yes. That's so what, pretty it was wild. Just a key, it was just a keyword and, like, there was no match type? Uh, it essentially functioned as sort of broad... Uh, and it sort of started with just sort of like an auto style where like you just put dropped a product in there and then it decided where it, it's going to display you for Dang. the gold, the, the dark ages, as they call it, as I call it right here hmm. for you today. So when, you know, they roll out keywords, that's awesome. When they started rolling out product targeting, that was really awesome and really, really welcome. And the way that it behaves, you know, you go, you create a product targeting ad group, then you type in a individual ASIN and a ASIN targeting, sometimes it might get referred to. And with that ASIN targeting, you, what you thought, what I thought when I first started using it was that it's going to put me down in sponsored products related to this item. So if I wanted to target a competitor's ASIN, I type in their ASIN and then I appear on their sponsored products related to this product. That's what I thought. Which makes right? sense Pretty because, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you type in a search into the search bar uh, on Amazon and you see, you know, a whole list of products show up. A few of them are sponsored. You're like, okay, that's a keyword targeting sponsored product. But then if you click on a, on a product there, then you see more sponsored products. And okay, this is a product targeting sponsored product. So, you know, like yep. the kind of, I guess, uh, I guess common sense or native intuition would kind of, you know, lend you to think that. So that makes sense. I mean, I I think a lot of people thought that, my, myself included. I think everyone thought, I mean, it's a very reasonable. You have keyword targeting where you target keyword searches, people searching keywords, and then you have product targeting where you're targeting the product page. So you think. And so that's why this episode title is five things you don't know or five ways in which you're wrong about product yes, targeting. Or for SEO purposes, how product <laughs> targeting in manual campaigns really works. Um, so, so there's a lot of sort of mystery here with how these actually behave. And, you know, Stephen, I was picturing 
it, a, a cold, rainy, strange, rainy night in California where you started to have this discovery. And we're going to get into what product targeting really is right here. So point number one of what product targeting really is. And basically, um, let me just like, just to kind of, and we've talked about this in the past, so you may have heard us talk about this, but this is a, a more detailed episode. Um, but basically, um, product targeting is not the same as ad placement. So in a campaign, uh, you have your placements tab and you look at the ad placements. And then in your ad groups, you know, if it's a manual campaign, you can choose product targeting. Uh, the most important thing to realize is that product targeting is different from ad placements. Um, they are not the same thing. So product targeting doesn't mean product page placements. And um, we did have an episode long, long ago where basically <clears throat> when we first realized this, I guess that was like six months ago. Um, what we pointed out is that if you had a campaign that if you had two manual campaigns, one only had ad groups that were keyword targeting, <clears throat> another one only had ad groups that were product targeting. And if you looked at the placement tabs on both of those campaigns, you'd see that both campaigns are getting impressions on both the search and the product pages, which led us to realize, oh, okay, so keyword targeting can place your ad on the product pages and product targeting can place your ad on the search page. And mm -hmm. um, I guess that should have kind of been obvious. We should have realized that earlier because there were product page ad placements before there was product targeting. Mm -hmm. You know, if product targeting was only uh, product page placements, then product page placements wouldn't have been a thing until product targeting came out. So, um, yeah, so that's that's essentially w what it is. And if you're wondering how that works, um, the way I believe this works is that if you're targeting a keyword um, and you type into the search, you know, say running shoes or whatever, and then you click on something, all the ads on that next page will also be titled uh or will, will still be kind of attributed to that keyword running shoes. And you can actually notice this in the URL on the product page. In the URL, uh, there will be a little thing that says keyword equals running plus shoes or something like that. Uh, we'll make sure to grab a, a screen cap of that too for the, uh, for the blog post. Um, but yeah, you'll see that there. And so those, those clicks if you, on, the, on the product page placements are attributed to that keyword URL. So that would mean what product page, uh, or sorry, what product targeting is, is basically instead of, you could, you could imagine it instead of like following the keyword around Amazon, now you're following the product around Amazon. So if you pick an ASIN and you want to target that ASIN, what that means is your ad will follow that ASIN wherever it goes. So, you're, so, you could follow, so if that ASIN is in the search page, you could follow, your ad will be next to that ASIN on the search page. Um, that includes, that basically means, uh, there's a whole, you know, imagine if you have a campaign or imagine you have no keyword targeting campaigns. You only have product targeting campaigns and you're targeting, let's just say just one ASIN, just for this example, you're targeting one ASIN, your ad could show up for any searches that that ASIN could show up. So if it's, if someone's searching for that specific brand, your ad could appear. If someone's searching for running shoes, it could appear. Uh, it can appear for a whole bunch of things. Uh, the main idea is that your product follows that other product it's like it's like stalking it around amazon and wherever it goes your little product ad is popping up and being like hey check me out whoa steven i can hear the the wind that you just created from all the heads that are spinning this is uh a lot to first digest it's almost like finding out santa isn't real meaning product targeting when you go and you type in a asin and you want to target that specific asin and when you look at a search term report for targeting an individual ASIN, you will see more than that individual ASIN. Uh, and likewise, when you type in a exact match keyword and you look at a search term report, you will see things other than that exact match keyword. So the, the, the thing here is that, you know, when you're targeting an individual ASIN, you can appear on a keyword search result page where that product is also. And you know what was definitive proof of this for any skeptics or doubters? It came out when sponsored brands released search term reports um, because sponsored brands, as we know, performs very differently from sponsored products. They have different definitions of broad match and a few different things. Um, but on sponsored brand product targeting, so on, a, well, let's start with sponsored products. On a sponsored product, uh, product targeting campaign, if you download the search term report, you'll see that you know there's a column that says targeting and there's a column that says search term and it'll just show the ASIN that you're targeting as the search term. With sponsored brands, 
if you uh, download that search term report, in the targeting column, it shows the ASIN. And in the search term column, it shows the search term that that ASIN was was the displaying words. for. In, yes. Yeah, which ultimately caused your um, your product to show. So, yes. So, yeah. And we'll make sure to grab a screen cap of that as well. <laughs> so to break that down, you have a product targeting ad, you know, product targeting in a manual product targeting ad group where you type in a competitor's ASIN or your own, where you type in an ASIN, you can appear on the search result page where that ASIN also appears. Mm -hmm. So even if a user typed in, you know, uh, home security system and that triggered the ASIN that you're targeting, you can also appear there. So in your, the keyword or the keyword or the thing that you're targeting is the ASIN but the thing that triggered it is home security system. So, so the product, tar it's still product targeting according to Amazon's definition. That is a product targeting ad. And the placement for that was the search result page or mm -hmm. top, you know, top of search, rest of search, whatever. It can also, of course, appear on that products, sponsored products related to this item. So it can appear in both places. And honestly, like we could end the episode here and just sort of talk, like have that be the thing. But uh, we've got some other points uh, that we want to get to. And, and we could, we could uh, you know, jump to number two. Let's do it. Let's do it. All righty. Point number two. So the thing, the second thing you might not know is that we're talking about product targeting ad groups. There is no such thing as a product targeting campaign. It is done at the ad group level. So what does this mean? This means that so many times when we get this question, can you negativize, meaning can you take a search, uh, you know, can you take a thing and turn it into a negative. You cannot do that with ASINs at the campaign level because there's no such thing as a negative ASIN at the campaign level. It's got to be done at the ad group level inside a product targeting ad group. So can you put a negative ASIN on a automatic campaign? No. Um, and that is, you know, part of product negative targeting that's worth thinking about. But basically, you can negative ASIN in an ad group, but you can't do it at the campaign. So with your auto campaign, you cannot throw in a negative ASIN and block your, your auto from triggering the ASIN in the same way that you can't go into a keyword ad group, keyword targeting ad group, drop in a negative ASIN and have it block the ASIN. It just doesn't exist yet. Uh, you know, Stephen, I about your, we, we do collect that data in the hopes that eventually you actually will be able to negative ASIN any ad group. But for now, keyword ad groups, you can only do negative keywords. Uh, and then in product targeting, you can only do negative products. Yeah, so an ad group is either when you create it in the manual campaign, when you create an ad group, um, you choose, is it keyword targeting or product targeting? And whatever you choose, you commit to. And so for both your... Uh, negative keywords, or I should guess negative targets and positive targets, you have to be consistent within that ad group. You can't change it. Um, <clears throat> so that, so yeah, it's an ad group level thing, not a campaign thing. So here's where that gets kind of tricky is in a manual campaign, you can have both keyword targeting ad groups and product targeting ad groups. So you can have both targeting ad group types within a campaign type, or I mean, within a manual campaign. Um, but you can add a negative keyword to the campaign to apply it to all of the ad groups, you know, so if you know that there's like a certain phrase, like, you know, say you're selling a product for, um, you know, adults and you notice you're getting a lot of like search terms for like kids and children in it, you can add negative phrase uh, kids and children in, at the campaign level and that'll, you know, automatically apply it to all the ad groups. Um, but just because, you know, how in an ad group, you can only do either a search term or an ASIN as a negative, depending on the targeting type in the campaign, um, currently you can only do uh, a search term because I don't know, Amazon's, it's a little bit archaic. Um, they haven't updated campaigns really to account for the fact that you're going to have product targeting ad groups within the manual campaign. 
Um, but that does uh, bring us to a little bit of a uh, an interesting tricky thing, uh, which is that sponsored brands perform differently because sponsored brands don't have ad groups, right? So with sponsored brands, it is either keyword targeting or product targeting at the campaign level. So when you create a new sponsored brand campaign, uh, you decided you want this to be keyword targeting or product targeting, and then there you do have to commit. So say you know you, you're targeting competitors ASIN, and then you're seeing in the search term reports, oh man, we're not being profitable on the branded search terms for this ASIN. Well, you can't negative keyword the the brand uh, because you can only negative keyword the ASIN. So uh, you so you run into some issues there, and that's where sponsored brands do perform a little bit differently uh, from sponsored products. And that's point two. Let's move on to point three, the weird thing about auto campaigns. So one very odd uh, thing about uh, auto campaigns is auto campaigns. So we just stressed that an ad group needs to be either product targeting or, uh, or keyword targeting. Auto campaigns are the only time an ad group can be both product targeting and keyword targeting. So you can target, and so you'll see this in a search term report on an auto campaign, um, you will see both search terms and ASINs in your search term report. Um, the ASINs are coming from the complements and substitutes targets, um, and the uh, search terms are coming from the close match, loose, loose match targets. So auto campaign ad groups are the only ones um, that can target both. However, the negative targeting still only functions as a keyword, uh, negative keyword targeting. So that's why you can't do um, a negative ASIN with an auto because the negatives, because just like a manual, you have to choose, you're committed to either one or the other. So same with negatives here, you have to, you're automatically defaulted as a, as keyword quote unquote negative targeting. So you've got to stick to that. You can't do both. Um, and so this is why we keep on, uh, or we've, we've talked about it before, but kind of the, our new novel concept is, um, your auto campaigns, you should, you know, treat complements and substitutes as dead because you can't defend yourself with negative ASINs in this scenario. So we actually started doing this for a, for a, a client account and it's been really successful so far, but we created new auto campaigns um, and we and we paused complements and substitutes from the get-go and we only let it target search terms with close match and loose match. And then uh, in you know our way of creating uh, you know some ASIN targeting auto campaign type thing, uh, we created a manual campaign that rather than targeting individual ASINs, it's targeting the category. So we targeted multiple categories uh, that includes both what would be complements and substitutes for this particular product. And from there, now we can do RPSB with that and take out the converting ASINs and add them as negative ASINs to this category targeting campaign, um, which is technically a manual targeting campaign. Right, because if you think about it, in the auto campaign, the whole purpose of an auto campaign is to cast that wide net, see what performs well, see what's going to see what you want to double down and invest more on and to see things that you are not going to want to use anymore. So essentially what that means is in an auto, if you are, show, you know, targeting, you know, with the compliments and substitutes, if you're out there, you know, triggering a whole bunch of ASINs, the ones that you like that you want to graduate and you want to RPSB into an ASIN targeting or product targeting ad group separately, you can't go back and block it from triggering in the auto. Uh, and likewise, if you have things you don't want to target anymore in your auto that are ASINs, you cannot add those as a negative. And that creates a big, big issue. And, you know, we said many months ago that it'll probably evolve that way. And that definitely appears to be the way that it is moving. So really, you know, really, it's really interesting, you know, if you're listening to this podcast, you know, we, we are putting a magnifying glass on like some of these areas that most people will not even notice and not even pay attention to. But like you listening to the show, we're able to take advantage of this. So the exact thing that you just described, Stephen, is going to save people money and boost revenue because it's going to allow them to properly research peel stick and block and if those words don't make sense to you be sure just to google ad badger rpsb and you will see exactly what we're talking about um, but that is you can't do it in an auto so that's definitely worth keeping in mind and let's move on to point number four sponsored display 
I mean, here's just another quirk <laughs> about product targeting. We should maybe name this five quirks about product targeting. Uh, sponsor display is Amazon's latest campaign type. Um, it is in beta still. And within this beta, they have introduced a, um, you'll see on the, if you open it up and you choose a targeting um, for your um, for your ad groups when you're creating the campaign. And you can choose, you want it to be audience targeting or product targeting, product targeting. And there's a little badger that says new. Um, and this is indeed new. Now, we said previously on point one, product targeting does not mean product page placements. Sponsor displays is the exception to that. That's the only time where it does mean product page placements. Because uh, what sponsored display ads look like, um, and a little briefer on sponsor display if you haven't listened to our, uh, our episode on it, um, but sponsor display or display ads um, are able to appear on Amazon and off Amazon anywhere within Amazon's advertising publishing services network. <clears throat> so it's, it, with display advertising, instead of targeting keywords, you target audiences. So rather than targeting, you know, what people are searching in, you're targeting audiences based off of their shopping behavior. And so you're, you can target audiences based off of the products that they viewed, if they viewed products that are similar to yours. Uh, it's effectively remarketing campaign type. Um, you can target audiences who have purchased your products in the past. So you can retarget them there um, with, you know, if they purchased in the past, you can start showing your ad again. Uh, and those, again, those ads do appear both on Amazon and off Amazon um, when they appear on Amazon, they will show up underneath the buy box on a product page. That is the sponsored display ad. So if you've um, if you've looked at a product page and you've seen on product details pages, the box usually um, it has like a little bit of a gray background to it. So it looks a little bit different from a normal sponsored product ad. Mm -hmm. It's got a little bit of a gray background. It shows the title, the price, the rating. So it, so it looks you know not too different, but it does have that kind of gray background that makes it stand out. Um, you'll see that. Um, sometimes it's underneath the bullet point, sometimes it's under, underneath the buy box, but those are sponsored display ads. And uh, in this case, when you choose product targeting, you are, targe you are targeting that specific spot on uh, a product page. That spot on the underneath the bullet points, that ad placement, that is the sponsor display ad placement. And if you're doing product targeting, that's where that ad's going to go on that product detail page. Whew. I mean, you said it. I don't have anything else to add to that. Uh, shall we get into point five? Let's do it. Now we are in the world of bulk ops. Some people say it's a scary world. Some people say that it's a world they couldn't live without. Uh, so bulk operations, uh, which, Stephen, I have to tip my hat to you. Uh, we have a bulk ops course inside of our academy. I do believe that it's the best bulk ops training for Amazon advertising on the internet. So thank you for doing that. Our users definitely appreciate it. Feedback has been great. Um, but essentially in bulk ops, there's things you need to be aware of how and when these things get uploaded. Now with keywords, it's super duper simple. You know, you just drop your, your new keyword in there and then you just sort of say what the match type it is. So, you know, phrase, exact, broad, so on and so forth, negative, exact, so on and so forth. But ASINs, a little different. Uh, if you've tried to add ASINs, and we've definitely had some questions uh, from people that uh, haven't gone through the course, is uh, so there's something wrong with the way that I'm adding ASINs. It's a little bit clunkier. Uh, so for ASINs, there's some formatting. And again, if you're listening to the show, you know that there are few things we love more than talking about formatting of spreadsheets in an audio podcast. So Stephen, <laughs> walk us through how to format when you add ASINs into bulk ops. At, so in the in the targeting column, so say you're uploading a bunch of new targets, if you just enter in the ASIN as your target, like the ASIN number, um, it will register in Amazon's like bulk operations API as a search term, and it will try to mm -hmm. upload the search term of whatever your your ASIN number is, it'll it'll think it's targeting a, a, a keyword or a search term, um, and so if you are doing that, um, I mean, yeah, we run into some problems. If you're, I mean, if you're uploading it to an ad group, it's going to throw an error and it's going to say, "Hey, this isn't an ASIN." Um, and so, anyways, what you need to do is you need to format it this way, where in the targeting column it would say ASIN equals, and then in quotation marks, the actual ASIN number. 
So ASIN equals quotation marks, ASIN number, no spaces in there. Um, and then the other tricky thing is there's actually two columns. It, there's a column called targeting and there's a column called product ID. They're right next to each other. And I don't know why, but you need to have that ASIN equals quotation ASIN in both of the uh, both columns. So you, you put your ASIN list in one and then you copy paste it over to the product ID column. Match type, rather than saying exact or phrase, the match type would be called targeting expression. Um, so, you know, in the targeting column, you upload your ASIN. Uh, in the product ID column, you upload your ASIN and then the match type would be called targeting expression. And if you're trying to do a negative ASIN, it would be called a negative targeting expression. Yeah. And then the final kind of quirk to note about product targeting in bulk operations is that um, you cannot create a product targeting ad group in bulk operations. And this has been the bane of my account management lately. Um, because if you're creating a new campaign uh, in, a, in a bulk operations file, you, you say, hey, is this campaign auto-targeting or manual targeting? You know, that there, that's a column. You enter it and you go from there. Um, with ad groups, when you create it, there is no column to say, hey, is this ad group product targeting or keyword targeting? That's not an option. And so it defaults to keyword targeting. Ouch. And so, yeah, it sucks. And so you, what you need to do is you need to create the ad groups manually in Seller Central as product targeting. And then you can go back and upload the ASINs to that ad group in bulk. So get it together, Amazon. It's a good tip to know, though. Good tip to know. Um, and those are the five ways to really elevate your understanding of product targeting or ASIN targeting inside Amazon PPC. Just running through these five points again. Point number one, even when you're targeting an individual ASIN for certain ad types, especially sponsored products, that could also mean you're going to show up on search result pages triggered by keywords. Uh, and it just means that you know your the uh, the ASIN that you're targeting also was triggered for that keyword. Point number two, again, product targeting is at the ad group level, not the campaign level, in sponsored products. But of course, sponsored brands don't have ad groups. Uh, we talked about how you cannot negativize, you cannot add a negative ASIN to an auto campaign, um, which is why Stephen shared that incredible tip uh, about turning off compliments and substitutes in auto campaigns and instead rolling with brand category targeting inside a manual ad group, manual targeting product ad group. Uh, point number four was talking about sponsored display, how that's really the only kind of ad type that actually only appears on product pages. So if you really wanted to fine tune and only target and really zero in and be sure they are only appearing on that individual ASINs page, sponsored display might be the way to go for you. And point number five, how to utilize them inside your bulk up files. Woo, Steven, we covered a lot, and that is awesome. Uh, in short, I absolutely love product targeting. You should, I, I don't think we've said one reason to not use product targeting. What we've done here instead is really talked about ways to better understand them so that you can better use them to get a better return from your Amazon advertising. Knowledge is power, and power helps you optimize your campaigns better. Deep cut, deep deep info for the listeners of the show. All the content about product targeting is done. You've got it. Go to adbadger.com slash podcasts to get all of our other podcasts. If you want to hear a little bit more, <laughs> deep, deep inside, behind the scenes information. Before we started this episode, Stephen, we talked for probably 30 minutes about what to do with the intro. And won't lie, I don't think it was Tiger King levels of drama, but <laughs> who knows? It might get there. <laughs> well, I still have to watch that that show. So coming you've, up this you've weekend, you've got to watch binge it. it. You've got to watch it. Um, but yes, so this episode will be the last episode where we have that mighty long intro. Uh, we're gonna change it up. I think we're overdue for changing it up, Stephen. Uh, we love the 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 fun style intros that we have here. You know, I don't know if you know. Uh, you know, I was working on some company values. You know, one of them is fun got to make PPC fun. PPC is dry. PPC can be boring. Uh, I think I think the way that a lot of people try to jazz up PPC is they they ham up the emotional side of it. They say, oh, if you know these product targeting tips, you're going to like retire a millionaire in three weeks. And that's just not our style. Uh, for some people out there, that's the way that they make PPC 
more engaging for people. Uh, however, we're never here to pull the wool over your eyes, make you think that it's something it's not. Always try to be grounded down to earth so we have our fun in other ways. And that's a little of the mission of, of Ad Badger. You know, we're, we're, we, we aim to be the most scientific of all PPC companies and really just give you the facts, help empower you to better make more informed decisions on your PPC and have fun while doing it because it is fun to learn more. It's fun to better command your business. It's fun to get better results. And heck, if we can throw in some Badger memes and jokes along the way, we're going to do it. That's my promise to you, dear listener. That's right. Badgers for life. Uh, yes, Stephen, a promise you made to all the listeners is that you are not going to shave until your until the last case of coronavirus is eradicated. Uh, I, think, I think I said until a vaccine comes out. Okay. Fair I, enough. It's actually not what I said, but I'm changing it to that. <laughs> okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, well, thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, A-J-A-C-D-D. Thanks for be- leaving us that great review in the in the beginning. Feel free to, you know, Apple Podcasts, uh, Apple Podcast Review, even if you don't listen to this on Apple Podcasts, it definitely helps out the show so we can go to all of our bosses and tell them, hey, we should keep making this show. Look how much people like it. So thank you so much, everyone out there. Have a good one. And I'll see you next time on the AMZ PBC10 podcast.